So I finally made it to Dick Prennicke's cabin up in Twin Lakes, Alaska. He heard of the uh, Lake Clark National Park, I think it's called. Finally in Port Ellsworth. Quiet this morning. <laughs> Very tired. And uh, just uh, been in the morning taking it all in. I'm just headed over to the visitor center right now. Walking over from the runway in the lodge.
Um, and they added screens there too. Um, so they added like the rebar just because they're bigger windows Hell yeah. and yeah. the screens. Um, but like the propane stove, like I had said, that um, so that was added. Um, it's not really, you know, efficient for us while we're working to have to like build fires every time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Hopes is smaller than Spikes on um, because it was like their guest cabin. Okay. Um, and then also the bunk beds are part of the restoration. Their cabin spikes, which I'll show you, but okay. um, then they called it Hope just because, you know, it's Hope and Spike and I mean, everything's named after Hope. We got Hope Creek, Hope Valley, Hope oh. Mountain, yeah. Right. So, and we have one to communicate with pilots. Um, we have satellite phones, mm -hmm. um, talk to our boss or, you know, like emergency stuff.
I finally made it to Dick Prennecke's cabin up in Twin Lakes, Alaska. The heart of the uh, Lake Clark National Park, I think it's called. I have essentially the place to myself. There is two rangers that spend the summer here in Spike's cabin up the, up the uh, shore of the lake. And there's a few people in here right now that are in just for the day visiting. They flew in for several hours, they're out doing a hike and then they're uh, heading back out this evening. So other than that, I've got the place to myself for three days. So I, in this little campsite right here by Hope Creek, spending the night here obviously by myself. And then tomorrow night, I think what I'll do is I'll pack up all my gear and I'll head up into the hills and sleep somewhere on the mountain. I think that, I don't know, I think it would be a lot nicer, just something unique for me to do on my own. So my camp's pretty well set up. This is it. Just sleeping with a bivy, open air, looking up out, out at the mountains, right beside the lake. Hopefully I can catch a lake trout or grayling off ashore for dinner tonight, maybe for breakfast. And uh, just enjoy the place and the quiet here all by myself. Incredible. So, so happy to be here. It's actually overwhelming to uh, step foot inside Dick Predicate's cabin after reading about him for, for years and watching the uh, the um, Alone in the Wilderness series on PBS back in the 70s and a few times over the years since then. Pretty uh, pretty incredible place. You know, as much as um, I'm enjoying what I'm doing, of course, where I am doing my, building my cabin and uh, living that lifestyle, uh, outdoor lifestyle, I have to admit, uh, so overshadowed by this location that uh, I'm afraid I'm not going to appreciate where I am when I get back. Uh, like I said, nice to be there still, but it's just, I don't know, I mean, take a look around. How do you compare anything to this? To live in a cabin in the wilderness, it just doesn't get any better than this, in my opinion. Anyway, like I said, I think I'll I know I'll still appreciate what I have, where I have it. Um, but like Dick Predike, and what I've just discovered talking to the ranger and uh, taking a look around the cabin, looking at the books and the journals and stuff, is that essentially he built things for the first two years. And then after that, he spent the next 28 years ex just exploring, visiting uh, family and fr friends, both in town and down in the lower states. Um, uh, hiking the ridges and exploring the place with park rangers and going back into town uh, Port Ellsworth flying back there to do work um, on the farm and uh, Helping out around around the village so it's not um, So cabin living is not just For me and I know for then for Dick Prennecke as well or I know for me and Dick Prennecke just knowing by his journals and what I'm hearing from other people uh, the cabin is a, a base, it's a home base to continue to, of course, enjoy the area, but then also um, use that free time, the time that's been freed up by having a place that's relatively low cost and low maintenance to be able to then take that extra time and go out and enjoy life and, and experience new things. So again, it's, it to me, it's, it's not an escape from society, it's not a Hermitage. I'm not trying to uh, avoid that society and my responsibilities. It's just a matter of surrounding myself primarily with nature and immersing myself in it and allowing this to be my safe place, I guess, if you can call it that. A place that I can de-stress and, and recharge and then uh, go out and, and experience life still with family and friends and see new places and do new things. That's what I'm trying to create at my cabin. And uh, this is one of the places I get to experience and get to visit and enjoy as a result of the lifestyle I chose. So again, for me, that just makes everything worthwhile. It means, makes the sacrifices worth it. And uh, just refocuses my attention on the things that matter, especially, like I said, nature, you know, time alone, but also time with my family, whom I miss a lot right now actually. I've been out after five days now 
I've got many more days ahead of me to explore Alaska before I return home. So, like I said, I am missing them on one main hand, major hand, but on the other hand, I'm enjoying what I'm doing here as well. And I'm fortunate enough that not only do I have the time and resources and energy to, to do this, but I also have family that supports it. So I thank them for, uh, for doing this, for allowing me to do this, or for encouraging me to do this. The camp is pretty well set up. Like I said, this is my bed for the night. <laughs> Can't think of any better location. And uh, I think I'll collect maybe a little bit of firewood, but other than that, I'm ready to go back and explore the cabin and the, his homestead, take it all in, see every little detail, and then uh, maybe go for a hike before catching something for dinner. Amazing. First ever gray lane, I got her on a fly. Beautiful. And that's my dinner tonight. That's cool. It's my first ever grayling. And uh, obviously first grayling on a fly. First time I've ever fished for grayling. Beautiful spot at Dick Prenicke's cabin, Hope Creek, where I've been reading about him catching these 50 years ago. Not me reading, but that's when he was catching them. Beautiful, beautiful fish. I couldn't be happier. This is so incredible.
That's good. That's as good as any fish I've tasted. Nice way to cook it. Smoked and slowly cooked. Have no spices at all in there. No flavoring. Just fresh, fresh fish. Mm. Man, is that ever good. Still kind of amazed that I'm here actually. Just finished um, dinner cooking up that grayling that I caught at Hope Creek, right where Dick Prennick used to catch his dinner. Sitting out here looking at the uh, same landscape that he looked out at, not much would have changed since then. The uh, mountains, every, everything, it's just incredible here. No, uh, little to no development. Just these cabins. There's a cabin across the lake there that you can actually rent, and uh, occasionally people are in there. I don't know. This park doesn't sound like it's very busy. Apparently, a thousand people a year come into Twin Lakes, come and visit here, and most of those are just day trippers. Very few people actually uh, uh, spend the night here. So I'm fortunate that I was able to find time to spend two nights here. And again, I'm so uh, shocked or uh, surprised at how long the days are. I don't, I don't know why I never thought of that before I came out. I didn't really realize. I knew that uh, sunrise and sunrise was around 11:30 at this time of year on these dates, 11:30 p.m. and sun up. I think it was around 4:30 or 4:40. I don't know why I just assumed that it was actually dark at that time between those hours but it's not all that means is the sun dips below the horizon but barely so the sky is still light in fact as light as um, I don't know like half an hour after after sunset it's still quite bright it's basically daylight like I haven't even noticed I don't we've stayed up later than that uh, a few nights and it, I don't even notice it being darker than it was at 8 o'clock Anyway, I'm adjusting to that still, so I still might go for a walk over to the the uh, uh, cowgill benches over here. I don't know, it's probably 8.30, I'm not even going to bother checking. Just go to bed when I'm tired. Anyway, uh, st like I said, I'm still overwhelmed and I brought the book along, of course, and I've been making notes in it as I, as I go through this week. Uh, I just wanted to read a couple of pages from these dates 51 years ago so 51 years ago is when he built the cabin cut the logs the prior years of so 52 years ago 1960 get this right 1968 he built the cabin so 1967 he cut the logs down i was born in 1970 to put that in perspective so sounds like a long time ago to most or some people if you're younger but it's really not that long, not that much has changed. In fact, I see the things that it, he used, some of the equipment, and I use the same equipment, those same tools when I was younger, and still do to this day, some of them. Anyway, so I did want to read a couple of excerpts. So what I'll do is I'll read, read um, today's July 14th, so July 14th, 2019 right now, I'll read the excerpt from July 14th, 1969. Or 1968, so 51 years ago. So just go back one day. So July 13th, it uh, says he got a small char on the trot line. Then its stomach and found a hook it lost a few weeks ago. Bright as silver, it looked better than when it was lost. I put the roof poles on the woodshed. Next comes the indoor plumbing project. The front framework is in place, just the right height for comfort. Sourdough biscuits drenched with navy bean soup for dinner. There's a dish fit for any working man. 
so July 14th, so like I said, that's today, 51 years ago, he wrote, Still beset with a siege of damp weather. This will be a day for inside chores. Fire up the smoker and give that big slab of bacon some more smoke. Letters to write, work on the wolf track box. Put a fresh kettle of navy beans to simmer the day away. In the afternoon, I pop some corn. I accomplish what I had set out to do. A man needs a catch-up day now and then. So it's amazing how similar probably people lives are people that were living long before him in log cabins what he did and what I'm doing what other people who live in um, in uh, cabins what you do in a day you, you have your chores that you do every day outside but then on those inclement weather days it's nice to get some stuff done inside because otherwise you don't choose to do that I don't choose anyway I don't choose to work inside unless I'm forced to in fact there's lots of things in my cabin inside that are still not done simply because I don't really need them to be done like finishing the loft for example I keep talking about building in uh, shelves and stuff right now I still keep all the clothes and and uh, tools and uh, gear uh, what else, uh, sleeping stuff I put it in boxes up up there um, uh, to protect them mostly from mice but it still would be convenient or much nicer to have proper like like drawers even anyway there's a bunch of stuff like that shelves on the main floor finishing off the kitchen I still haven't finished the drawers in the left side of the, the kitchen the cupboards um, is a cup quite a few things and like I said I just don't make them priority because I would rather work outside and get the bigger projects done so I guess after two and a half years since I started the cabin not much more than two years actually um, I'm seeing an end to the bigger project so I see that time and I'm interested in following up on the, the rest of the, his journals after say 1970 because um, and I have read quite a few of them but there's a couple of uh, editions that I haven't read that fill in some of the years that I haven't read and um, uh, just curious how he spent his time now talking to the warden here earlier today at Dick Prennicke's cabin, she gave me a tour of the of his cabin and then also the other uh, cabins, Dick's cabin and Hope's and Hope cabin. And uh, she was telling me about in those journals about all the people that he used to spend time with. So he'd leave here briefly to go and visit people in Port Allsworth, his family down, in, his brother in particular down in California, uh, his family in Iowa, and uh, just stuff in in the. Uh, like I said, Port Ellsworth. I don't know how often he got to Anchorage, but anyway, he did uh, socialize still. He still got out and still had people visit. Um, but he did an awful lot of hiking, is what I understand, and just exploring the area. Um, forget how, he said he wore a pedometer one year. I forget how many kilometers or miles he said he, he walked that year. It was a huge amount. More than 3,000. Was it 30,000? Anyway. Look that up. So that's what he did. That's the great thing about not having a, a job. Now he was retired, don't forget, and had time and some enough money to live this lifestyle without having obligations or having a job in particular. And he didn't have a wife, so he was able to essentially make a decision each and every day pretty much what he wanted to do that day. And just do it so um, so that's what he did just put for hikes long hikes exploring and documenting all of the things happening in nature here the the water the precipitation levels the ice thickness in the winter the game that he saw the, the animals the uh, just the cycles when ice out was uh, went out when it came in so documenting sort of climate or long-term weather patterns so that's believe it or not uh, time consuming enough that it ends up filling a day and then there's the the chores like cooking like I do the same thing you put beans on he does that a lot I do the same thing I'll just put a especially in the winter when I have the wood stove uh, running all the time burning I always have something on there either a stock pot a soup pot or a chili or something that can cook for a long time so that takes some time though to prepare that and then monitor it and uh, firewood is big chore 
in the winter I've got fire like I said burning all the time and you, I have to have fire wood uh, stockpiled at least a year in advance so it has time to dry so that fills the day. So I thought it was interesting to see what he was doing on that date and what I did roughly a year ago on the same date, say July 14th, 2018. And then again, uh, July uh, 14th, 2017. Um, I just like seeing the parallels between what he's, what he did and now what I'm trying to do. I mean, I have a long way to go to be 100% into this full time, uh, living in the cabin and, and not relying on the gro my goal is to not rely on grocery stores very much or to be buying uh, clothing or much clothing and food and things like that I want to get to a point at least try for like a year living completely off the land from things that I grow and, and uh, harvest so that's my plan he didn't really care about that he he uh, only hunted once or twice here and fished for a lot of his meals but most of his food he actually had flown in regularly um, something food from the land has just been one of my passions something I've always been interested in so I plan on doing more around that than than he did um, and I understand why he didn't cause I know it probably one big part of it is that first of all I didn't want to kill the animals that he was that he liked watching and um, it's time-consuming when you're harvesting and preserving in particular your own food and if you're growing it, it takes a lot of management. And he was, I think, was more, even though he was living in the, remotely with no neighbors, no, no immediate neighbors, he, I think, was restless enough that he didn't want to be tied down to a garden that he had to tend every day, which you'd pretty much have to. In fact, I'm gone for two weeks right now. And uh, my vegetable garden was just starting to get, take hold, but I don't know what the weather's been like back, back home. But if it's been hot and dry like it was mostly when I left, then that could be shriveled up and, and dead by now. We'll see. Anyway, I think what I'm going to do, cut that one grayling. I think I might go down and take a few more casts. Actually, the wind's changing. Oh, what's that? That's west. Is it west? Yeah, it's west. Yeah, sure enough, the clouds are blowing out and I see a little bit of blue sky. I was worried I was going to get poured on tonight the way the clouds were building. Um, so I think what I'll do is go down and, and take a few more casts, maybe half an hour of fishing, see if I can catch another fish or two. Uh, I might go over here, like I said, up on, I don't think I'm going to climb the mountain today at this time of day because the, there is some bears in the area and I don't want to, um, bears tend to be more, less, um, nervous around people, less wary, and a little bit more confident when it's darker. So in the evening they get active and um, I just don't want to push my luck here. I know there's a black bear with cubs behind here. Um, I was walking down the beach with the uh, warden after she was just telling me about that up on, on the mountain, but I noticed in the gravel as we were walking there was bear tracks walking along just ahead of us. So. They're definitely here, and then there's been one brown bear, or a couple of brown bears back over the high ground there, which I'll have to be careful because I'm going to hike that tomorrow. Um, and the other thing is I caught that fish and cooked it, cleaned it down by the water. Hopefully I got rid of all the scent, then brought it up here and cooked it. Impossible to get rid of all scent, so if there's a bear around, it'll def definitely smell it. Hopefully they're intimidated by uh, the scent of humans and they have no interest in coming in to investigate the camp when I'm here alone. So, we'll see. My first night sleeping in grizzly country alone, actually. And, uh, I don't know if I'm nervous, I'm aware. <laughs> so we'll see if I sleep completely comfortably. And I'm tired, so I think I might. But I suspect I be a little bit more restless than normal, a little bit uh, more awake and, and uh, paying attention to the noises in the, in the forest. Anyway, we'll see. I'll let you know in the morning whether I find any evidence of bears being around 
or uh, if I actually hear or see one in the night. So, yeah, I'm definitely going to shut it down. I'm going to go for a walk, so for whatever I see tonight, if anything, I will. Well, stay tuned after I <laughs> say goodbye to you, I guess. If there's anything interesting that happens between now and bedtime, I'll put it up here and, and show it to you at least. And then they'll start over in the morning with a new a video, new vlog, new uh, uh, post or video showing all of the things I did on the 15th of July. So tomorrow. And like I said on all of the other videos in the series, don't forget to check in on the other channel, My Self Reliance. Sometime soon there will be a video of this, a couple videos of my entire Alaska trip. A little bit uh, different format than you're seeing on this channel. All right, good night. Well, and I will see you at the cabin soon. In the meantime, I'll see you back here in Alaska. Take care. always thought the uh, spikes in the boards like this and in the w uh, window coverings and stuff was a little bit overkill but <laughs> all the spikes are here at the front door and uh, here's where the bears trying to get in and it's definitely a grizzly so look how wide that is and it's like three inches between claw marks that's fairly fresh too actually yeah Trying to claw his way into this cabin. Crazy. Who wouldn't want to be in there when that was going on? Got my first ever now Arctic char. That's cool. On that little uh, beaded nymph again. Fly reel, fly rod. Beautiful little guy. First char, so he's going back in the water.
Okay, now I'm going to say goodnight. Actually, what time is it? It's impossible to tell the time. Here. 10 o'clock. So the 14th of July, 10.01, and I am going to bed. Good night. Thank you.